Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF Bets race of the day for Wednesday, June the 20th, race number eight at beautiful Belmont Park. We're going six furlongs on the inner turf. It is an optional claiming race and you can bet it with your very own DRF Bets account. There is a giant pick six carryover at Belmont on Wednesday. Play it with $100 in free cash. Learn more at drf.com forward slash bet. Let's take a look at this field of turf sprinters. Uh, $85,000 is the purse and you can access free formula later past performances on the race of the day event page at drf.com follow along with matt and i as we take this field in post position order beginning with the number one and anita partner and anita partner's an old friend matt from southern california grade two placed going down the hill maybe last time a mile was a little bit too far it's possible i have to be honest though there's a, a little part of me that wonders you know as much as i loved her and i know you were a fan of hers as well i wonder if she just when she was in her best form, I wonder when they went up and pushed her up to the Monrovia, and I know she got a piece in that race last May. I wonder, ever since then, her form really has just kind of gone downhill, and, and I wonder if this is probably what she's needed, this sort of level, non-winners of whatever the condition may be. But even having said that, it just feels like she might be a cut or two below the best runners, I think, in a race like this. It'll be interesting to see what kind of trip Javier is able to work out from the inside post position, cutting back from a mile to six furlongs. While she showed a little bit of speed in Southern California, she was more of a late runner. Again, it'll be interesting to see where Javier has her placed. The two is Downtown Mama. This is a first-time turf runner trained by Linda Rice by Spitestown. 13% with first-time turf runners. I wish there was more turf in the pedigree. Yeah, I was going to say the bottom part, I, I don't see a heck of a lot on the dam side, which is a concern. You see they paid a boatload of money for this horse, and it just doesn't seem like she's really panned out. Now, the most recent form, I, I don't know if you want to hold any one of the past two races against her, but even having said that, it, to me, it's a negative that they're even moving her over to the turf. It feels like she's a dirt horse, and she just hasn't been in good form, and they're trying to shake her up. The dam went 0 for 1 on the turf. She's filled only one turf winner from five horses to try the surface. She is a half sister to a stakes place runner on the turf, but I wish there was a little more turf pedigree. Maybe this one can be forwardly placed. The key to the race is the number three, Fire Key. As we see from the time form US pace projector, not only is Fire Key a deserving nine to five morning line favorite, just simply based on the buyer speed figure she earned last year as a four year old, but she can be close in a race that should favor horses on or near the early lead. Are you a little bit concerned the trend Pat Kelly might be using this race as a bridge to Saratoga where she went two for two last year. I think it's something you have to be cognizant of, no question about it, but I do like the fact that there have been instances in the past where she's fired fresh off of the bench. Now, maybe we won't see her best until that second start, but against a field like this, it feels like if she comes with her B or B-plus game, I think she's just better than everyone else. And from a tactical standpoint, you see that pace projector. If you work out that trip, I think she'd be very tough. Now, she has been away seven months, but boy, she got good towards the end of last year. That win in the Autumn Days Stakes came against some really salty competition. Stormy Victoria came back to run third in the grade three Mike Charmer with a 98 buyer then won the South Beach with a 99 buyer you've got several other horses in that race that came back to do good things she's the horse to beat layoff or no the four week fair is one of two in here trained by Christophe Clement this horse ran just fine in her seasonal debut and you can make the argument that she'll move forward in her second start back I wonder if six is a little bit short for her yeah, I agree with that. You see, she was campaigned at seven eights more often than not when she was over in Europe, came here, first start going seven eights. And it just feels like one of those instances where she was coming from off of it in that debut here in North America. For what it's worth, the first and the dead heat for second, Malibu Stacy. They came back with 85 and 89 buyers in their next start. So the form of that race has been okay. I just wonder, again, maybe this distance is a little bit on the sharp side. And I have to be honest, the running style more and more on the turf at Belmont recently when it just seems like it's rock hard and it's like asphalt. I think these horses coming from off of the pace are going to have a little bit of a difficult time. And Time Form US has this horse, the number four, dead last in the early portion of this race. She may have a lot of work to do when they swing into the stretch of this six furlongs. The five, six, and seven, they're all entered as main track only. The eight is Miss Gossip, second time for trainer Carlos Martin. This may run just fine in her first start for the barn over good going. The winner of that race, Tilly's Lily, was the favorite. She's done well on firm ground in the past. I need a little bit of improvement out of her, though. I think she's okay. Her recent form is a little bit spotty at best. I think she did some good things, though, going back to last year. Uh, to me, she's the kind of horse that you want to use underneath. The last time the nine JC's shooting star stepped foot on firm turf was at Aqueduct going six furlongs, and she came from off the pace to win with a 94 buyer speed figure. She backed that up with the same number in the license fee stakes in her first start off a little bit of a layoff. 
And in that race, she was kind of covered up, came with one run down towards the inside, and she ran just fine. I mean, that 94 buyer puts her in very good stead with this field. Last time out in the Mount Vernon, they stretched her out to a mile, and Manny Franco could never get cover with her. She was chasing a slow pace. This race was wired by feeling bossy. Chasing a slow pace while three, four wide, attacked on the turn, and then flattened out. I like her turning back to six. She may need a little bit of pace, but I know firm ground is good for her. I think she has a shot. Yeah, I agree with you. I picked her second in here. You know, the beautiful thing about Formulator, you can go through and you can and darken out what you want to see and what you don't want to see. And I have a filter for the six furlong turf sprints in each of those two races, two and three starts back. They're the ones that stick out like a sore thumb. And that's a positive in a race like this. This is what she wants. Those 294s, those make her prime time players in here. And it is worth noting, all three of those most recent starts, Timeform has had those fractions color-coded blue. She's been up against it in all three of them, and she's come with good efforts in each one. Perhaps she's compromised again on Wednesday, but I think she's going to come with a run, and this is what she wants. Wheatfield hasn't won a race since December of 2016 and is a turf maiden, but Nick Zito's going to put blinkers on Wheatfield for this race. No match for Miss Gossip last time out, but that was a race in which she came with a late run. She is solid. With the blinkers on, I would expect her to be a lot closer to the pace, and that could work out for her. She does have a little bit of class, and she's going to be a big price. Yeah, I, the recent form, I feel like they went to the turf trying to find something out of her. At this point, with the recent form, to me, underneath only. Blessed Silence is the number 11. She just caught the boggiest of turf courses last time out in the grade three Galleret. She was beaten a million lengths by Ultra Brat. It's very hard to rate that performance simply because the course was so soggy. Two starts back, she was in against a, a legitimate graded stakes caliber filly and inflexibility. It was a short field, there wasn't much pace, and she didn't do much. I know you like this mare a little bit. What about her cutting all the way back? You know, there's there's a, a lot of things here that I'm unsure of. I, I liked her in that Gallaret, and the main reason there was because I figured that was going to be a soft turf course, and you saw the damage she had done over in Europe over soft going. I thought it was going to translate well, and okay, Ultra Brat freaked out that day. I'm not going to really hold it against her. I'm more concerned about the turn back here. I understand that they had gone shorter with her in the past, but it just still feels like to me over here the game was going to be middle distances, and now six furlongs. I think she's going to be outrun early, and I don't know if it's going to work for her. Let's take a look at our top picks for Wednesday's DRF Bets Race of the Day, part of a major pick six carryover. You're going with the three fire key. If she comes back in the same form she left as a four-year-old filly, she is the most likely winner. No question about it. And I think the other horse for me in here would be the horse that you like, JC's shooting star. The difference and the real difference maker, if I'm playing the pick six, I'm going to play with ticket maker. The thing that may separate one from being an A and one from being a B is the tactical advantage. Fire, Fire Key is going to have a major tactical jump on JC's shooting star. Now, maybe the recency is going to be the difference, and that's going to be the thing that gets JC's shooting star over the top over Fire Key. But I just feel like that jump that Fire Key is going to have is going to be too much to overcome. It's a good point to be sure. JC Shooting Star might be up against it uh, from a pace dynamic standpoint. I think she'll be a slightly better price than the three Fire Key. She'll be my top selection off that last race in which, again, she was up against it wide off a slow pace. But in the pick six, I'm also using your horse, the three Fire Key. I'll use the nine and the three as A's, and it's a very deep backup. I'll use Wheatfield, the 10, as a C in a ticket maker pick six sequence. Again, you can play that pick six with a new DRF Bets account, and if you sign up, you get $100 in free cash. Learn more at drf.com forward slash bet. Approximate post time for race number eight at Belmont Park on Wednesday, carryover day, 518 Eastern. Good luck.